Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for September 16th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Ms. Burner. Aaron Howard. Here. 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 Mr. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lynch. Here. Mr. President. Thank you. And tonight we have the invocation by Vice Mayor Lynch. Oh my God. This is fire. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again as we do every meeting before you, Lord. We ask you to bless everybody in this room, bless this council administration, keep our firefighters our police officers, and our military safe, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, we'll need actions on the work session for uh, August 29th, 2019. Thank you, motion. Second. Second. Yes. Vice Mayor Yeah, I wouldn't hear abstain. Okay. <laughs> he will. Mayor Lowry. I wouldn't have to work. So yes. Yeah, you wouldn't hear either. Oh, that was that one, yeah. I'm sorry. Car Abstain. <laughs> Car accident. Mr. Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? I was here, but I have to abstain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Mr. Cook? Yes. Okay, that's acceptance for All right, and again for the September 3rd, Regular scheduled council meetings in 2019. So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Sheen? Yes. And it's accepted 7 0. All right, moving on to communications. So tonight, um, it's a bittersweet, uh, I'll say announcement tonight. A lot of you may have heard that uh, our fine deputy Allender is leaving the city of New Carlisle to, she has gotten a promotion to Sergeant, which is great for her, not so good for the city of New Carlisle. But uh, you know, we definitely uh, congratulate her for that. So if you wouldn't mind deputy Allender coming up for a moment, please, so I can embarrass you. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, uh, Deputy Allen has been uh, with New Carlisle since 2015, correct? Yep. And, you know, some of the great things I like about Deputy Allen is that she, she puts herself out there as much as possible. I mean, you know, and all of our deputies do a wonderful job. But I like the fact that, you know, you see things like her stopping and checking on uh, kids, say, at the, the Smith Park uh, Hills during the the snow, getting out, making sure they're safe, and then even taking time to ride down on the hill with one of them. Uh, you know, I think some people even gave her a little guff over that, but I mean, that's, in my opinion, that's what deputies are about. If you've got some downtime, get out there and build that trust with, you know, especially the smaller kids, your, your community and your citizens and the, and the businesses, you know, she's always stopping and, and uh, checking out the businesses and, and the pool and the city buildings and making sure all of our citizens are safe. And I just, I feel like just over the past few years, she's, you know, she's, she's went that extra mile of making sure that the citizens in the community trust her as a whole and uh, make everyone feel comfortable with you know talking with police officers because they all do such a wonderful job. So with that being said, a key to the wait on one. <laughs> so please come here, key to the city for doing such an excellent job with this. <laughs> And we appreciate everything you've done, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Um, you know, maybe uh, someday uh, either you'll get demoted and want to come back, or, uh, or you get so far up, you can come back and do as you please. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And also, I 
believe you're not done yet. When you're done, uh, <laughs> Chief Trustee has Thank some you. things he would like to say. Thank you very much. I just want to say. Oh, oh, you're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> Deputy <laughs> Allender, uh, we always have a big running joke between the fire department, police department, deputies. We have fire, fire versus police, fire versus police. Uh, Deputy Allender breaks that mold. Uh, she was always willing to jump in and help us in any way we can. I've seen her from everything from getting the cot out of the back of the medic to throwing a pair of gloves on and helping us work a patient. Uh, we affectionately called her Narcan Kid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> during overdoses, by the time we would get there, she'd already have a dose or two doses in the patient, which helped us. Um, we still say she was carrying on her belt, not in the car, but that's okay. Uh, but Deputy Honor, Sergeant Honor, excuse me. Um, yes, it's a bittersweet, it's more bitter for us because uh, she's been a fantastic uh, member to us. We don't consider her working for the sheriff's office. We always considered her part of us. So, from New Carlisle Heart Vision, this is to certify that Rachel Allender, effective this date, is now a, an official honorary member of the New Carlisle Heart Vision. Thank you. It's an honor. It's been an honor to work here in New Pearl Isle, and it was a hard decision to leave. Um, it's, it, it's bittersweet. You know, I had to do what was best for my family and my career moving forward. Um, everybody in this room, everybody from the fire department, um, everybody who couldn't be here has been a part of what I've been able to do for this community. And it's, it's like I said, been my pleasure, and it's been an honor to not only work for this community, but you guys have all accepted me as a part of this community as well. And, um, you know, a lot of you know I have family ties to New Pearl and I'll still be around and still continue to come around. But thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, moving on. Now we're all depressed and sad. <laughs> Communications. Uh, let's see. City Manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Yeah. I'd like to start off with the city manager's report, and we'll start with our finance discussion with our finance director, uh, Ms. Watson. Good evening, council and residents. Uh, for the month of August, our total revenue for the general fund was $100,918.24. For August, our total expenses for the general fund was $74,631.87. Year-to-date total revenue collected has been $4,452,525.59. Year-to-date total expenses has been $3,661,386.75. Along with the reports that I gave you, and every month I don't talk about the pool, so I'm not going to get asked. I am going to talk about the pool first. Um, the pool, so far, we don't have final numbers on the pool, but it looks like the pool has finally um, did a great job. Uh, we've come ahead um, with the transfer to date. Um, right now, we think the pool is made somewhere around $60,937.65, but that is with our transfer. So if you minus out our transfer, the pool is still to the good, almost $21,000. So we're pretty proud of that. We're proud. I like to thank April for all our hard work and all the people that work at the pool. Um, that's always good to see. So we're, um, I'm very pleased with this, and I'm sure you are too. Thank you for the report. Council, any questions? Or... Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor, will you extend a grateful thank you to your wife we'll do. for the fine job she's done? Yes, sir, I will do that. Council. All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate the report as always. Good job. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. 
Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. Under Service Department, I'd like to state that we had completed some mi more minor road repairs in the areas that uh, we had ruts that were created by trash trucks, um, especially there on South Scott Street and on um, ja uh, Jackson Street. We do have a few other ones on Washington and Henry that we do need to take care of that where it's pushing some curb up, but we definitely have those on our radar. Uh, as you see driving down 235, the storm drains on Main Street, they have cones in them. We're still working on estimates to replace those with new structures. Um, I am meeting with the contractor tomorrow morning to do final walkthrough with Prentice. We will be meeting, meeting at the wastewater treatment plant and we'll be talking about those catch basins. Citywide street sweep, uh, very important. It starts tomorrow, September 17th, and it will go on through the rest of the week. It may go on to the following week, but um, the big thing is to get out to allow, uh, make sure residents do not park on the street. We've put it on social media. Um, we passed that out. We did purchase 10 signs that um, will we put out for north of Lake. He thinks the next couple days will be the Willowick section and the Northwood section. So two to three, we put signs only on that side. So as you're driving down Lake, no matter what road you turn in, you'll see a sign that will say we're there's uh, to try not to park on the street. As we move on, we will try to update that and then move the signs to the other side. So the goal is pass it on, and hopefully with the more vehicles off the street, uh, it will be a lot cleaner. Um, and I, and I got to say, with all the new pavement we've been putting down in the area, the roads do not catch as much gravel from the roads that are in a lot better shape. So they're looking uh, great as well. Tecumseh Trail overgrowth is to be boom art mode by the county. Um, it's, we're basically on their schedule, but it should be done by the um, end of fall. And of course, we had uh, discussed in our work session for the wastewater treatment plant clarifier breakdown. And as we are aware, I'm currently collecting more information um, to keep proceeding with that. 2018, 2019, various road projects. Galewood Drive, uh, did I say Prentice in my first one yet? We're not walking Prentice tomorrow morning, we're walking Galewood. Prentice was two years ago. Uh, we're walking Gilwood Drive tomorrow morning. It is complete. We're doing our final walkthrough. Uh, that contract was for $334,639.50. New Carlisle Street Levy share is approximately $41,400. Uh, there were some items in the contract that were not needed for this project. I know the total contract price will come down. I don't know how much our estimated uh, city share will go down. It may or may not go down um, based on the ratio that the um, federal has for their um, numbers. Street resurfacing project, uh, it's been done for some time, but uh, we are finally getting invoiced for it. But Hemlock, Butternut, and Bittersweet resurfacing is complete. Cost was approximately $45,420.66. I believe that will be under that amount because we did not have to do any partial depth repair on any soft spots. And then I will update council when the final numbers are out. Uh, wastewater plant influent building upgrade project. Uh, we are still at about eight, um, eight to ten weeks out from equipment, and basically all I've been doing is getting uh, shop drawings and submittals from the contractor, approving those. We're just doing all the side work while everything is still on order. Traffic signal upgrade project. Um, it is out for sale right now with the state of Ohio. There were three um, plan holders that did pull plans to bid. Uh, I think bids were either opened late last week or early this week and is to be awarded by 923. That contract is still to be constructed and completed um, by 831 of 2020. So, but from what I'm understanding, the contractor will be awarded. He will get the poll, uh, the signal polls on order because they're about six months out. So we're guessing sometime around late spring, early summer to perform this project. And that is currently all I have um, on my report. I can entertain any questions with those or anything else you might have about the city. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko? <clears throat> I have two Mr. Kitko real quick, if you don't mind. Um, one, we, we only sweep this, the city one time in right town. It's every fall, correct? It just happens to work out that way with a lot of scheduling. We, I try to get them in spring, but. Yeah. Do you think it would be beneficial to do twice a year, like one after the winter when there's all the salt and debris floating around then once in the fall again? Or is it, too um, it would be better to do two, but they're running about 50 some hundred dollars each sweep. Okay. Um, and one is our dura patching. This will get rid of all our dura patching, and sometimes it doesn't end until 
you know, mid-summer, where we're finally getting a lot of the repair work done with the dirt patcher, and that creates a lot of gravel. And that comes out of the street, or the street fund, correct? Yes. So maybe we could talk about it during budget talk. So. Sure. Um, and then the second was, um, to be honest, I can't remember what it was. So if I remember, I'll email it. I'm good for one question. <laughs> All right, well, then I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're very welcome. Mr. Bridge. Oh. See ya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kiko. <clears throat> Moving on with the city manager reports. Um, our fire report with fire chief, chief trustee. Mayor, council, citizens. Uh, in the month of August, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 78, excuse me, 71 EMS calls in the city, 15 in Elizabeth Township. Uh, they responded to seven fire related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by, from mutual aid by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We had three, we answered three mutual aid calls to Pike Township and three mutual aid calls to Bethel Clark. In the month of, uh, excuse me, I should say August, I'm sorry, the division responded to one overdose call. All the uh, power tool hose testing and ladder testing is completed for the year. And as of today, all hydrant flushing is completed for the year. Uh, during the month, we had two significant incidents in the city. On August 26th, at approximately 18.55 hours, we responded to an electrical pole fire on Scarf Road near the water tower. Upon arrival, we found a power pole that had snapped about four feet from the top of the pole and was, on, was burning. We had uh, dispatch to contact DPL to respond to the scene. We shut down Scarf Road both ways. When DPL got on scene, uh, they shut down all power to the pole. We then had engine 52 crew pull a hand line and put the fire out on the pole. Uh, I know there were some concerns when people saw that we put water on an electrical pole and what are we doing? Um, <laughs> we only did this because DPL crews were able to assure us 100% that the power was uh, shut off to the pole. Uh, we had the crew use what is called a penciling a technique, which means they pop the water on and off real quick first which breaks the stream, which lessens the chance if there would have been any type of power on the pole, but there wasn't, uh, and put the fire out. Uh, doing this allowed DPNL crews to get to work quicker to restore power back to the, uh, back to the city. Uh, then on August 28th, at 1156 hours, we responded to a gas leak at Goodall Lumber Company at 311 Ohio. Upon arrival, we found that a crew drilling fence post in the back area where their new lumber yard is going to be had drilled into a high pressure line. Uh, at that time, we immediately evacuated the building, Goodall Lumber, and also uh, New Carlisle Plastics. Uh, we had dispatch contact Veteran Gas. After they were, got on scene, they were able to assess the situation and decided they had to dig on both sides of the pipe uh, to squeeze it off and closed off the, the leak and repaired it. It was repaired and back in service right around 3.30 that, uh, that evening. Uh, that's it. Any questions? Any questions for Chief Council? <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. <coughs> Vice Mayor. They did have uh, ups come out and yes, search the, lines, correct? The, the crew that was doing the drilling did have ups come out, and they had an all clear Friday morning and an all clear that morning. Did they get like a certificate or something? They, or have, a, they, or have, something a confirmed, that... they have a confirmed email from ups. Okay, thank and you. And that will be handled. The, the con. General uh, contract manager for Vectrum was on site and he will be dealing with that issue. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Chief, is a uh, change of subject. Is, is it the fire department that's taking donations at some of the local stores for uh, candy for Halloween? Uh, usually, um, the one of the stores in the city, uh, Dollar General, collects candy for us every year. They have a box that sits beside the cash registers and if anybody likes to, they can buy a bag of candy and throw it in there, and we, and we use that. Plus, we also purchase candy out of our association fund uh, to supplement that for passing out candy. Okay, great. Thank you. I just want to kind of get that out there. Appreciate your report. So that wasn't a hoax. Right. <laughs> thank you, Chief. Appreciate the report, as always. Uh, thank you, uh, Chief Trustee. Moving on with the city manager report for our police discussion, our sergeant, uh, sergeant, uh, uh, our police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. <laughs> Thank you. 
council and uh, audience. I'm happy to announce Deputy Ken Majorsack. Stand up, Ken. He's big Allen. Ken not only lives in the city, uh, but he's been a part of this several times before. Uh, his wish was to come back, and honestly, I welcome him. He'll do a fantastic job, uh, as always, and it just completes our force once again. We miss Deputy Allender, uh, but she was promoted to sergeant, and if, a, if we have a sergeant retire between now and, what is it, March? Yeah, March. Yeah, more than likely, uh, Deputy Major Sack will be the next sergeant. So. We hope things work out for him, and I'm not allowed to be around any steps or anything when he's behind me, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, thank you. You'll do a great job here. Thank you. Well, I've put my trust and faith in him many times, and he's never failed me. So you're, you're going to like Deputy Major Sack. Okay, here's the report for August. New Corral deputies were dispatched to 141 calls for service. Assaults, we had one. Reports taken, we had 23. Assist, there was 33. Felony arrest, we had two. Misdemeanor arrest, there was eight. I see warrants, we had six. Moving, uh, well, traffic warnings, I'm sorry, was 28. Moving citations, we had 13. Uh, business checks is 611. And I grant you, they check the same businesses some nights. Uh, they try to alternate, but uh, that's how many times they've actually checked the businesses, and so I think that's a good number to add in. We did have two overdose. We didn't have any suicide attempts that I know of. And burglary, we had one. Patrol car monthly mileage was 2,454 miles. And this is a little bit about our two deputies, one that left and one that's here. Deputy Rachel Allender was promoted to the rank of sergeant the first part of September and will be assigned to the Clark County Sheriff's Department Jail Division. We want to congrat congratulate her for a great job and all the extra work she did for the city of New Carlisle. And she put in a lot, and a lot on her own time. Uh, this includes assisting the fire department many times and numerous citizens while working in the city. Deputy Allender was, Allender was an asset for New Carlisle, and she will be missed, that's a definitely. Congratulations, Deputy Rachel Allender, on your promotion. And that is a, uh, it's a big title at the Sheriff's Office. Once you get Sergeant, you're now in a different union. You're in the Command Officer's Union. Um, you're mid-management, and you're that guy in the middle that gets it from both ends, to be honest with you. So she's got a tough job ahead of her. But coming in for her is Deputy Kim Major Sack. He was selected to fill the vacancy of Deputy Allender and will start a new parallel on today, September 16th. Deputy Major Sack has worked in the city before, and one time he was assigned here as a patrol deputy. Deputy Major Sack is familiar with the cities, with their day-to-day -day operations, and will do an outstanding job here. And we just want to welcome back Deputy Kim Major Sack. And to conclude this, uh, like always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 uh, if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to solve a crime. And I'll be honest with you, uh, people will tell us when we're up here they see things, but we didn't have one person call in and report anything suspicious last month. So it takes us all working together, and vandalism in Springfield is definitely on the rise. Some of it will filter out to here. Uh, we get a lot of problems from Huber Heights, um, and that kind of filters into here. But please call us. It's not wasting our time. Most of the time we're waiting for a call while we're out running traffic or checking businesses. But don't hesitate if you see something suspicious. Take a few notes, because, you, you know, it might be two or three days before you get an answer, and by then, maybe you forgot the license number or, or the color of the car or whatever. So please take the time. If you see something suspicious, you can call in anonymously, and that's the way we treat it, unless it is a serious crime, then naturally we're going to have to try to find out some information on it. So with that, it concludes my report. And
Thank you very much. Council, any questions for Sergeant Under? Or... <clears throat> yes, Mr. Underwood. <laughs> I'm getting more worried again. <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor, yes. Uh, Sergeant Underwood, mm -hmm. uh, what shift will Deputy Major Sack be working? Will it be Rachel's? Deputy Rachel, Deputy uh, Allender's, uh, Sergeant Allender's old shift yes, for right now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Because we're, we have some void hours, um, we change schedules around some. He, he has a set hours, but that could be changed when needed is the reason I don't give you specific hours. Thank you. Oh, and welcome to the city uh, once again. Thank Deputy you. Major Sack, glad you're back. Thank you. You was an awesome deputy before, and I have no doubt that you'll still be an awesome deputy. You. Although you won't be as awesome as Sergeant Allender. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> you're okay with that, right? <laughs> yes, I was, uh, welcome back, Deputy Major Sack. Uh, I got a strategic plan for you. This would be perfect. You know, okay. The citizens are going to get mad. Since people have gotten used to your car sitting there on the lake. Yes. He brought that up my office. And people know that knew that you didn't work here. You just go out, set your car, and now boom, you're ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if we get a couple phone calls. <laughs> Up on that radar. Get a couple of speeders and without even moving. That's what we call fish. Everybody's barrel. like, yeah, he's, he's, he lives there. He's not in that car. That one's in that car. Wait a minute, why is he sitting in his car today? Wait a minute, why are the lights on now? What's this about? This is new. So, anyways, thanks, Sergeant Underwood, for the report. Um, Sarge, actually, I did have something I wanted to ask you, but I do want to do it after the meeting off camera. Okay. Got a concern someone had brought to me. So I just, a little more privacy. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, Mr. Ridge. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Underwood, for the uh, police report, and thank, uh, welcome, uh, Deputy Major Sack. Thank you for coming in today and sitting with my office for a little bit. It was a great time. Thank you so much, sir. Yep. And uh, moving on to the city manager report under informational items. The Gateway Business Group, that is what we formerly known as the Western Clark County Business Coalition, they are having a meeting on 9-18-19, that is this Wednesday. Uh, their uh, director did reach out to me, wanted me to announce that at this council meeting, um, hoping that some council members and some citizens are able to show up. Uh, but it is at 5.30 p.m. at Mother's Stewart's in Springfield. And they actually have a really cool speaker. His name is Jason Duff. He is from the organization Small Nation Strong, and he'll be talking about how to rebuilding, how to rebuild small town America, which definitely fits the new Carlisle description. I unfortunately will not be able to attend this. That is my birthday, and I will be hopefully at a nice restaurant eating a good dinner about that time or shortly, uh, shortly thereafter. So I will not be able to attend. Uh, new building update. There is a slight change in the second floor layout. Um, when, we, when we took out the stairwell that connected the front half of the building and council chambers, what that did is made that back stairwell the main entrance to the second floor. Well, they didn't change anything on that second floor, so you're literally walking up the second floor into the middle of our kitchen. Um, so they on their own, the city's not being charged for this, uh, for this slight change out. They actually boxed in that lounge, so when you walk up that second floor, you kind of enter like a small lobby area. So I think it's a little, a lot more professionally look, uh, look, looking, and also I think it's going to be a lot more conducive to us, so people just don't walk into the middle of our kitchen. Um, but I did want to uh, update council on that. Um, I did, ha I do have that included in this council packet. So if anyone would like to see a visual of that, just please let me know, and I can share that with you. Uh, the 2025 capital improvement plan. Uh, first read, first and only read, will be as a resolution, and that is anticipated for the second meeting in October. That would be October 21st. Um, we will need to place a legal ad that details uh, the time and place that the public can view the plan, and also when the public hearing will be before adoption takes place. Um, so basically, we can have that public hearing before the vote at the regular council council meeting. Uh, before you guys actually vote on it, you can take questions from your citizens during the public hearing comment of each resolution that we do have. Upcoming, liability insurance renewal. Uh, I will be seeking reduction. Right now it says on there for, for the second straight year, I kind of shot myself short. I'll be seeking reduction for the third straight year in a row. Um, early indications that we can attain that. I just don't have the final numbers on that. Health insurance renewal, I am expecting an increase on that. We had a pre-renewal lunch, me and the finance director, Ms. Watson, with two uh, members from McGill and Bob Rager, who is our uh, brokerage for health insurance. And Debbie, please correct me if I'm wrong, but she's anticipating, she said about maybe a 10 to 15 around that ballpark increase. So we'll have to see when the, when the final numbers come out. Um, 
every year we can expect that health insurance to go up. We just don't want it to go up too, too much. Um, and the last thing on the, uh, on the city manager report, um, volunteer firefighter in, uh, insurance services, uh, they offer our volunteer firefighters specialized insurance. We do this every year. This does not go in front of a council because the dollar amount is well below my spending authority. I think last year it cost us total $1,700 to cover all of our volunteer firefighters. And it just gives like accident uh, uh, additional money if they get hurt or sick while they're on the job. Uh, but again, that will have no legislation to city council. And I do believe that is due uh, November 20th on my end. Uh, there is one more thing I did hand right here on the city manager report that I did not put on my actual packet. I do apologize about that. I had a brief discussion today with Mr. May about this, but I would like to propose um, a, a work session at 6 p.m. before every council meeting at 7. That way we don't have to do it on an off week and we're not taking hopefully anyone's uh, free day if we do it uh, any other day. So some, something similar to how we did it today. We meet at 6, have any discussion what's coming up, and at 7 we go into regular session. I need a motion to approve or deny that. So moved. Six. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So with that motion on the floor, just count on every Monday that we have a council meeting. We show up at six. We have the work session. Then we go into regular session. And I really want to say these past two work sessions, I think we've come, we understand what's going on a lot better. So thank you for agreeing to do these. I like them, and I hope we can continue the trend. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else for the city manager, council? Mr. Cobb. Mr. Bridge. Yeah. Uh, we're in the new business, correct? What's that? You're in the new business? No, we're under the city manager's report. Oh, well, I'm not on their mind. Sure. I'll wait till we go new business. Okay. No problem. Anything else for the city manager and his report before we move on? <coughs> Alrighty. For comments from the members of the public, if you have any comments, please go to the podium, your name and address, and try to keep it to five minutes, please. Linda Eggleston Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. About two weeks ago, as some of you have seen on Facebook, a woman announced on Facebook that she had been walking in one of our parks with her four-year-old son and had found a syringe on the ground. And to save her son, she picked the syringe up in her bare hand. She was then dutifully abused for picking it up and everybody told her all the dangers of that and uh, she said well it was my four-year-old son and as someone has pointed out if the syringe had had fentanyl on it if the mother picked it up she would probably be affected by it but if the four-year-old picked it up it could have killed him Syringes in our parks are a serious issue. And uh, to try to defuse something, I suggested that I would go to the Crime Watch meeting uh, last week. And I went and suggested that maybe we could set up some kind of classes for parents and children, maybe work with the Clark County uh, Healthy Living Communities Task Force to set up something to educate people on how to deal with these syringes. Um, I was directed at that point to the deputy who was at the meeting, and uh, he then said, well, 
I think that this would be the function of the uh, school resource officer. I think you should talk to Paula Crew. So I talked to Paula Crew this morning, and she said that she would indeed pass it on, but she was concerned that a city problem would be passed off to the school district, which it shouldn't be. The function of the city council goes beyond managing finances and paying bills and um, getting reports on police and fire. It goes beyond that. You're responsible for the health, well-being, and safety of the citizens of the city. I would like to see something done by the city to address this issue. And it's going to have to address it on more than one issue. It's going to have to address it on an issue of safety and getting the needles out of the parks collected somehow. I don't know if that's getting together work crews who've been trained on how to pick those things up and collecting them on a regular basis. I know it has to include educating kids and adults as to the danger of those needles and how to take care of them. You know, if, if I go over there and I, I have to go into the park and carry plastic gloves and a plastic bag with me to pick up something that I see is in a danger to my child. Um, if that's what it is, then maybe we need to notify people that they need to do that. But we need to address it, and I'd like to see council address it. If it's setting up classes and setting up some kind of a cleanup for the park, and just educating people and getting rid of the health hazard, and it is a, as I understand it, a very large health hazard, it needs to be dealt with. Thank you, Thank Linda. You. Council, any comments for Linda? Mr. Cobb. I, I would like to answer this, if, if you would allow me to. Ma'am, just so you'll know, we start a program called Safety Village. We're up here every year, and it's for four and five-year-olds, and we beg people to attend it. We talk about safety, we talk about drugs, we talk about picking up in guns and needles, and we get very little response from this area. It's all I can do is to keep it up here. So we are training our kids. We have the D.A.R.E. program that our children go through, and they know guns, needles, and sharp instruments, they're not to pick up. You're going to find those in one of those every now and then in every park in, o in Ohio. But if you let us know, our guys will get out and walk through the park and take a look. Now, we might miss something, but it's a serious problem all over the United States. And if there's an adult living today that don't know not to pick those up, I don't know what else to do. You have to know if you get stuck with that needle, it could be fatal. Our guys won't pick it up. I can guarantee you, if you call the sheriff's office or the fire department, we will have someone out on the scene where that is at as soon as we can get there. There is no reason anybody has to pick anything up. We encourage you to walk away. We encourage the children to walk away. They have been trained to do that. And most of those kids will do that. Unfortunately, we're only seeing about, at the most, 25 kids in our safety village program. And, it, and it's free, no cost. We give them t-shirts, pictures. It's a wonderful program. So this gives me a chance to promote that. We have things in places people won't attend. That's part of our problem. If we get the message passed out, we can, we can also educate those young kids. You can't tell a three or four year old one time to leave something alone and it worked. That's why we start before school starts, preschool, we catch them again in the first grade, uh, we try to get there in the fifth grade, and definitely the fifth, uh, the fifth grade. That's our core program there. So we, we really are trying and have a lot in place. But that's what I said earlier in my report. We need citizen involvement. If we don't know something's laying there, and if someone picks it up, we 
can't help you any. It's too late. If after the meeting, let me know where you found that, and I'm sure Deputy Major Sack tomorrow will walk through that area and look for any instruments that could be hazardous or dangerous. Uh, we, we want to help you guys. And I, sometimes, right now, police all over America are getting a bad rap. We're not out to hurt anybody. No, I understand. I'm just telling you. We're good guys. We always have been. We've had some people that shouldn't have been in law enforcement do some, some things that have been destructive and just plain not right. But that's not all of us. We want this community up here to thrive. We want people to go to the park and enjoy the park. We want you to have fun. And now knowing this, we're going to look into it. But by all means, I encourage everyone to leave it alone and call us. If you have something to put over it or a marker, that's great. But if you don't, call us and we will properly handle it. I know I've been on the soap wagon here, but it is, it is important to us uh, to get the message out. And we, we need your help to do that. So I'm sorry if I sounded rude, um, but we work every day to try to make your life easier. And mine was not meant to be rude to you. Okay. Well, thank you. I mean, they, they say when it, the act and proper, it takes a well, village here's, to make a Here's child what we normally get. Normally, somebody will walk up to us and said, we'll say, somebody said this happened. That does us no good. The person that actually witnessed what happened needs to contact us. Third, fourth, fifth parties, the story changes. So if you witness anything like that, call us immediately. We will take care of it. I promise that. If, if I need to get out from behind my desk in town and come out, and I'll do that. So I'm, I'm finished. Thank you. Chief, do you have something? Yeah. To piggyback on what Sergeant Underwood said, and I, I hate that the woman felt that she was being browbeat or in any way being ostracized for trying to protect her child by picking that needle up. Um, but it is true with the fentanyl, especially with the fentanyl. Um, I just happened to have one in my pocket for more runs. Uh, we had to go out and start buying new gloves to wear that is fentanyl approved that we, so that but just by touching a patient or touching needles that we don't, we had a year and a half ago, a medic crew responded out of Fairborn to OD, picked the patient up and just from the medics touching the patient, the driver of the medic on the way to the hospital OD'd. And if it wasn't for the paramedic in the back being able to crawl to the front and get the medic pulled to the side of the road, they would have they would have crashed. So, like Sergeant Wood said, I understand protecting your child. I would do the same, but please call dispatch. Call Sergeant. Wood. I don't care. My crews do not have a problem going out, picking it up, wearing our wearing these. We have sharps containers on the rigs on every rig, whether it's a medic or an engine. We have sharps containers. We can put the, put the syringe down in the sharps container and it's taken care of. Uh, and if there's anything I can do to help as far as any classes or anything in the city as far as that, please contact me. I, mean, I think people know that there's a danger. I don't think they understand the gravity of the danger. You don't have to get stuck. Right. No. And it just touches. Well, that's the parents have some responsibility yes, there, too. Right. And to think, I wanted to set some, see something set up so that the parents and their kids and whatever could come in. It's just kids, not just parents. But something in the community will help deal with this because I don't think people know the gravity of the situation. And if something happens, then everybody's going to say, well, it's the Fault. It's everybody's fault because nobody in this community is stepping up. Oh, I want to go off of a little bit of what you said, Sarge. Is your your group that you can't get anybody to attend? I mean, no, and I'm not saying that everybody because there's some of our crime our, our crime meeting people here tonight. But, uh, nobody can. 
not nobody, but a lot of people just don't care until something happens to them. And then once that individual's problem is solved, they're gone. So it's it's real easy to you know, to say, and I'm not saying you, Linda, I'm just saying in general. You know, we, we could all say, and we talk about different groups that we'd like to get set up for different types of things, parks and, and, and what you were mentioning. But it's, I don't, I don't know if I should say it, but people just don't care. Not everybody, but the majority of people just don't want to take the time to get out and do the things that, that we as a community should step up and do together. It's, it's sad, but um, I, I agree with what you're saying. And thank you for what you were saying, Sarge, because to be honest, I, I did not know that group that you were talking about. We pass it out to every kindergarten class. Uh, in their kindergarten packet, they get a, they get a form every year. Uh, and really? Thank you. I think we should so try and get that. All the, all the other kindergarten parents are aware of it. Okay. And we try each year to get, get more in. But it's, it is by far one of the best programs for, for you that we have. Yeah. And we've had it. I've been a sheriff's office for 31 years, and I've been involved in it for 31 years. And it is my favorite program. We teach kids on how not to get hurt. And that makes all the difference in the world. Let me cut you off for just a second, Sarge. Uh, Mr. Chammy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe we can put it on the city's website as a link. This is just a suggestion. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll, yep. I have some questions I mean, for them whenever council's done. Hey, on just a second. Does council have any other comments on this? Randy, did you? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, Sergeant, with this, the safe village thing, I, I didn't know it was there, and I think a lot of people um, are very glad we've learned about that program. Is, can you send me like a, some information on a PDF or anything I can put on the city's Facebook I, page? Sorry. Can you send me information on that program? I can put it on the city's Facebook page. Oh, absolutely. So anybody four to six years old, you don't, I mean, the parent, like if, if a parent saw the information, they could call the number and then get their kids scheduled for the next class. So it's, that's how that operates. I, okay. I can do that. It's, and we'll try to do that tomorrow. Does the actual program, Safe Village, do they have a dedicated website to that particular program? No, we don't. We you normally, don't. well, it's always done uh, when school is out in the in the early springtime, mm -hmm. in between school. So it's something that uh, takes us about a month to prepare prepare for when okay. school's out. Um, and there's lots of different reasons parents can't attend. They want to go on vacation. There is so much for youth to do. Uh, there's church groups, Bible study, and things like that. There's baseball that interferes. Mm -hmm. So we really struggle to keep our attendance up. But once your child goes through it, you're going to be so happy. Is the the app? Is there an application that they would have to fill out? Yeah. Is yeah. that application on? Can I put a link to that application on our website? You can, but we normally don't do that until school's about ready to be out. Okay. Because so if they don't have a, so you want me to explain yeah. a little bit about it? Um, it can you hold on? To the, so if they don't have a land, like a web page that there is no link to put on the website. That's why I was asking the question. See okay. if there's a link. Of, there doesn't seem like they have anything I can link to. Yes, there is. Oh, there is one. Okay. What do you got? <clears throat> um, it will run uh, in this area, Talbot Park Lane Elementary. There are two sessions. There's a morning session and an afternoon session. It runs either the second or third week of June. Depending on when the schools get out, it also runs at Miami View Elementary, which is in um, South Charleston, and it runs at Northridge Elementary in Springfield. So he's kind of in all the little tips of the county. Um, there is a link that probably I would say April it it opens up. There's like a registration process, mm -hmm. and that link is available, and it takes them right to their online application. The parents fill it out, and they'll get the reminder call sometime in June. And and they come, it's, the parents drop them off, it's two and a half hours, it's basically four and five year olds. So every preschooler in Clark County will get all of the information, it comes home with them. And then it also is given at every kindergarten night that most of our schools have where um, the upcoming kindergartners come for the evening and kind of go around and tour the school, it's just for kindergarten. Um, my husband and Deputy Lyle also, they set up at that night to have kids sign up cool 
Yeah, so we can get you all that information. Please send it to me. Um, once the date is officially set, that depends on the other schools um, when they let out at the end of the year. It kind of goes off of how that goes. Awesome. But yeah, you can have the link on your website. And it should. And Mrs. Berner, I don't know how many years she's been doing it, but she's donated over 120 hours uh, during that session for us. She's right there with the children, and she has to watch over her husband, but uh, he's our dare instructors that are, are there doing the education work. But if we didn't have a few volunteers, it would be really difficult. <coughs> she's put in a lot of time and helped us with Safety Village. All right. Well, thank you, Sarge. Thank you, Ms. Berner. Appreciate the information. Thank you, Linda. All right. Anyone else? Any questions or comments tonight? All right. Moving on. Two committee reports on the night resolutions. One for introduction and action. Ms. Berner. Resolution 19-14R, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution endorsing the official thoroughfare plan for Clark County, the city of Springfield, and the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, move to accept resolution 19-14R. Second. And an explanation to this resolution. This is the thoroughfare plan for the county that we had a speaker on during our work session. Council, any questions or comments? <coughs> Ms. Burner, when you're ready, please. Okay. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Thank you. And down to other business when you're ready, please. All right. Other business, Congress, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the City Building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will be held Wednesday, October 9th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the Intergovernmental Joint Joint Board Meeting will be held Monday, September 30th at 6.30 p.m. in the Aero Conference Room at Tecumseh High School. All right. And Mr. Cobb. Now can I go to... You sure can. He's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bridge. Yes, sir. On the corner of Smith and Lake on the west side, southwest side. Southwest side of Smith and Lake? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the house has a spouting. Oh, we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we tagged that. It's the gutter coming down. It's still coming down. Yeah, it, it, we've tagged it. We have to give them a time to fix the problem, and then we'll go in and fix it once they have. If you go on around Orc Drive, yeah. in that little cul de sac there, the guy parts a wood chipper. Uh, Somebody coming off or coming off the Smith exit? Coming off the Smith Street, turn right on the horse. Okay, so I come. Just as you come down where the condos are at. Yep. If you look to your right. Okay. He's got trailers, wood chippers. Uh, what else has he got in there? I'll, I'll, I'll get with Jim, our code for it. He just went down north um, the last week or the week before, having people repair their fences along their back. So we'll figure out if this guy's pulled some things out from the back to fix his fence, or he permanently puts them there. Oh, he but puts them there every day. Every, so it's been ongoing for some time. It's an ongoing problem in general. Has it been going on longer than the past month? Oh, yes. It has, oh. okay, gotcha. The wood chipper, what else did you say, sir? There's some trailers, and uh, he's got like a little backhoe. A backhoe? Yeah, a little, little one. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into that, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Cobb? No, I'm done. Thank you, sir. And uh, last but not least, I just wanted to uh, talk with council and uh, city manager, I guess, more council, either way. Uh, please let me, we need to start pushing that out um, as far as uh, you know, issue number, signs, what we want to decide, if we want to put signs out, if we would just want to let it ride and try and do it through newspaper and social media or you know, walking flyers. I just want to see uh, what council thought about it and when we want to start because that is coming up quick. Have, have we got a committee that's doing anything on that project? That I mean, is, that is you, that is, no. that is your I've been on the committee on that and Mr. Lindsay, I know, was on it the last time, I believe. 
Um, I knew the legislation was passed um, that you guys can spend X amount of dollars per issue. Um, so that can involve like um, getting yard signs made, but you're going to have to have, I don't know if you have to have a committee for this particular one or not because you're a lot. We well, did. Well, you did because you didn't have any right. ordinances in place to expend money. But since we set but money in place, money I think, think we Some of you guys just want to get a few yard signs to put out. You want me to do extensive mailer to every address. I think you want the yard door signs, knockers. the first time, I could be wrong. Well, no, it was with the street levy. It wasn't with the, mm -hmm. the, the police. The police levy. The street levy failed initially with, I think, mailers. And then when we went big yard signs, not big, but your standard yard signs. Mm -hmm. And then it passed the following time, so. I think you'd be better off just mailing flyers out to them. Because right now you got too many signs out with the election coming up. Okay. So I think it'd be easier just sending flyers to each house. It'd be interesting to see the cost is the cost break now too. Mr. Cook, we'll just go down the line so everybody kinda of thinks. Mr. Cook, what do you feel? Now, can I can I intervene for one second for you guys sure. now? This is at, we all know this is one of it's an income tax. So um, basically it's a it's that addition to carry on that 0.5. Right now our income tax rate is 1.5%. 0.5 of that is earmarked for police services. Okay, so it's not like it's a levy that has to do with millage or anything like that. Right. So really the dollar amount is 0.5% of what we bring in. And it's a renewal. And it's a renewal, so it's no additional money to anyone else. And we got, I think we should stress that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mr. Cook. I, I guess I have a, the question of do we have funds to for a mailer for signs for anything we'll probably have to uh do some reappropriating because i honestly don't think anyone thought about the levy in november uh when we were doing the budget right so um we'll we'll have to see if there's any kind of money laying around if not we'll just have to put some in a line item and do some legislation behind it Would, all right, let me let me play the devil's advocate here. Would it be better to, I guess the word is, set up a committee and seek donations for this project? That's on you guys. So you set a committee and you get private funds, or you have us dig through the budget to try to find some funds. Um, that's up to you guys to decide what you guys want to do. Uh, levies in the past, I've been going door to door, so not, not knockers. Uh, it's really a council thing. You guys should come together and find out how you want to move forward with it. Right. If you guys want to hold on for a couple of days and maybe have a meeting next week on it, I don't have a problem coming to attend that. Um, but we need to have a big discussion about how you want to promote it out. Right. Yeah. You okay, Mr. Cook? I guess I'm. And we'll go down the line, and then if we need yeah. to come back. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Sure. Lindsay. Uh, a couple of years ago, I believe we passed an ordinance to set aside $5,000 to uh, promote or depromote levies or whatever the mm -hmm. city so desired. Uh, I think that money should still be there someplace. Well, that legislation said you're allowed to spend up to $5,000 per issue. Let's say you put $5,000 right, away. Right, right. The uh, so since this would be an issue, I think we should take some of that five thousand dollars, if not all of it, and either do a mailing. If mailing, I don't think you're only going to get one. I think out of the five thousand, uh, depending on what, well, unless we have a bulk or something, sure, uh, and possibly some signs. I think both would probably help. Also, uh, city website city uh, Facebook page. Uh, I know a lot of council members talk on their Facebook page about various sure. things. Uh, I think that's what uh, But we didn't we didn't appropriate five thousand dollars when we we're doing the twenty nineteen budget. So what that means is we'll have to re supplement our budget, do some legislation. I don't think Debbie at this point in time of year wants to go through and try to find five thousand dollars in this land. I know where you should find it too. That's that. You probably get me to Yeah, exactly. You know. Where, where are you going? Well, between where? your paycheck and Howie's, you oh, should be able no. to cover it. No, you out of the or general fund. <laughs> I'm sure the state of Ohio would frown upon using personal can, wage money for a, a income tax. You can make a donation. Huh? You can make a donation. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Shannon. 
Would you finish, sir? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Mr. Shane. How do I feel about what's it? going on? Yeah, I mean, just which route you think would be best, signs, yards, whatever, I mean, whatever you think. Well, it seems like going right on door knockers are the cheapest. But you saw the thing for postage. Our charter. If we do Facebook, we should kind of agree on what no, to put out there. But I think that's a real good idea. Somewhere. Because well, there's an ORC. There's two. There's multiple. I do versions. think that the signs you are good. Are there is a lot of signs out there. But uh, uh, I do think yeah. we need to get as much as possible. People where they're not going to read their mailers, maybe they'll read that sign and figure, you know, they're going to figure out what's going on or find out what's going on. So, honestly, I'm for the uh, Facebook mailers and signs. The whole deal. The whole deal. Mm -hmm. Because if you've ever run a political co um, campaign, you know, you pretty much need the whole deal. I found that out last time. All right, thank you. Ms. Eggleston, any comments? Well, I think we, I, I would agree with the mailers and definitely the social media. Um, as far as signs, there are a lot of signs out there for right, now, right now, and I think they're just going to get lost. So I would do, I would really push the social media and mailers. The, uh, well, well okay. no, you're fine. I guess we could uh, sit on it for a few days, a couple of days, just, you know, and then maybe just touch base. And like Mr. Bridge said, we could set up a meeting and, and go forward with what we think is best. Um, what are some of the things you guys you guys would like on your mail? That's what I'm saying. We get. I think we should sit on it a day or two. I mean, we could sit here and talk about that for hours. Okay. So I don't want to waste anyone else's time on it. Mr. Lindsay, did you have something else you wanted to hit? I was going to, uh, since Mr. Bridge is good at putting things like that together, see if he would mind putting something together for council or the clerk as far as the 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 uh, police levy, yeah, police levy, and present something to us to, to take a look at. If so that, you, you want me to create a flyer and, and if, present if it to you. you would want to or if our clerk could do that because she actually you know she works for us so maybe our clerk should uh should bring something forth in that yeah, regard or the two of them can collaborate graphic design isn't their job titles <laughs> yeah but mr bridge is so good at <laughs> okay um, i'll just have something for you guys in the next few days i'll take care of it email it out to sure, us not a problem i mean yep i got it no no it's fine i mean i just I'll, You've already got enough. I will do it. I will draft it. I will design it, and I will send it out to you guys. I just I don't know where to go from as far as what you guys want on there. Do you guys want to some of the keywords you guys want on it? Um, I'll just do a few, maybe give you guys some examples. Yeah, no, that's no, no, definitely no, renewal. Don't, don't, uh, do don't get into it too. Actually, just hold yeah. off for a minute. What? No. No, it's fine. It's, it, it, we'll just do some keywords and put it on there. All right, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Council, anyone else? You got a minute back here. As a citizen, I would think that it'd be important that you put on there that it's a renewal and no change in taxes. Right. In big red letters. No new money. Right. Or opening <laughs> anything up. It's in your face. Great. As they throw it into the trash, they will see no new taxes. Right. <laughs> but vote yet. All right. <laughs> so ba the basics, the no new taxes, stuff like that. Council, anything else? Mayor, move to adjourn. Second.